name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I was wondering what the top New Year's resolutions are recently, and so I was checking a couple sites, and it turns out that it's commonly thought that the most common New Year's resolutions, the top five, are as follows. Number five is get a better job. Number four, get a better education. Number three is quit smoking. Number two is volunteer to help others. And the number one New Year's resolution, one I made myself, lose weight, absolutely, lose weight. Resolutions are a nice thing to do at the beginning of the new year. It's something that we often think, you know, I'm not doing this thing, I need to start doing this thing. As Christians, we realize that the fullness of life is connected to what we do, and we often think about doing something new, something we haven't been doing, which is good to do. But another thing that we're called to think about, especially as we begin the new year, is those positions that we currently hold, those titles that we currently carry. And we have to ask ourselves, am I living up to this title as God calls me to live up to this title? Today is Godparents Day, and the title of Godparent is a blessed title. When the title is really lived out, it means that someone raises up a child to know God. They take an active part in that child's spiritual upbringing. But it has become, unfortunately, largely a ceremonial title. But to really live the title is a blessing to the child, it's a blessing to the godparent, it's a blessing to the church, and it's a blessing to the world because it helps to create godly children. In Jesus' day, the Jews called themselves by a variety of titles. And one of the titles that they used to refer to themselves, which is also a biblically-based title, is Children of Abraham. They considered themselves to be children of Abraham, and they were proud of this lineage. But Jesus warned them about considering themselves to be worthy of this title without living this title. In Matthew 3, he said to some of the teachers of the law that were being kind of self-righteous and weren't really living according to the law, he said, don't think that you can say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. Jesus wants us to realize that to truly hold a title means to live by what that title requires. For instance, we are all called to live as neighbors. We're called to be neighbors. But to really be a neighbor, we have to act neighborly. It's not enough to just think of ourselves as neighbors if we're not in a right relationship with our neighbors. In Luke chapter 10, Jesus addresses this issue. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What's written in the law? And Jesus replied, how do you read it? And the man answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You've answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But the man wanting to justify himself asked Jesus, but who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, and left him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. When he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went and he bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, and he gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expenses that you have incurred. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hand of thieves? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus said, go and do likewise. We are each called to review the titles that we have and ask, am I living as a good neighbor? Am I living as a good Christian? Am I living as the child of God calls me to live as? 
Am I living by the titles I have? Am I living as a servant of God? As the kind of husband, the kind of wife God wants me to be? Am I fulfilling my role as mother, as father, as brother, as sister, as godparent? Am I fulfilling my role as an apostle of God, one who is sent to bring the message of Christ to others? Am I fulfilling my role as an evangelist, for all Christians are called to be evangelists? Am I fulfilling my role as a saint? During Badarak, there's one point where the priest holds up the host and he says, E serpultium serpults, for the sanctification of saints. Each of you, each of us, are the saints of the church. We are called to be the examples of light and love to the world. Are we fulfilling these roles? Are we willing to make a resolution to live lives according to the titles that have been received, living as worthy of those titles? It's a temptation to live our lives and to carry our titles with complacency, but God wants us to think about the responsibility that comes with the titles we have, with the positions we have, and not to simply fall into familiar patterns if those patterns are not as God-glorifying as they should be. So today, let's review our roles as church members, as his children, as saints of his kingdom, as family members, and ask, if we're showing the kind of dedication and holiness that God wants us to show, and if we're resolved to increasing that devotion during 2015. We cannot ever rest on our laurels. Husbands, can you imagine in your marriage if you were to say to your wife, you know, I've served you for many years, I've really done plenty, and I'm not going to serve you anymore, because in the past I've served you a lot. Uh, I should have been serving you very good for many years. So now, you know, I've, I've done enough. I think I've proven myself as a husband, and I'm done serving. Or wives, could you imagine if you said that to your husband? In order to be in that kind of a marital relationship, we have to understand that as long as we draw breath, as long as we are part of that relationship, we have an obligation to serve. So too is our relationship to God because there is a marriage between God and the church. And as long as we call ourselves Christians, we have an obligation to continue in service. It's not okay to have the title of husband or wife or parent and not serve. It's not okay to have the title of Christian and not serve. As long as we are Christians, we must serve and build up the holy church. Jesus said that no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is worthy of the kingdom of God. We are tempted to look back at the work we have done. We're tempted to look back at what our accomplishments are and to feel a sense of not just accomplishment, but you know what, I've done all I need to do. But when someone was plowing in the days when Christ said, anyone who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not worthy of the kingdom of God. In those days when a person was plowing, the plow would be pulled by an animal and they would have a piece of wood that they would have to hold on to to keep that plow line going straight if they were to farm. And if they look back, the plow will not go straight. So you can't plow forward and look backwards. We can't go forward in our lives as Christians focusing on our past accomplishments. We have to focus on what God's calling us to do today and tomorrow and going forward into 2015. This is one reason why it warms my heart to see people within this parish who have been serving for so many years that continue to serve that don't say, you know what, I've done my part, it's someone else's turn. But people who say, as long as I draw breath, as long as I'm a Christian, I will serve and serve with dedication. This decision to live a life of service is exactly what God wants us to do for the goodness of our own souls, but also because we're a wonderful example to others. Today, as we walk together as fellow pilgrims, and we are pilgrims because we're on a common journey to the kingdom of God, as we walk forward as fellow pilgrims into this new year, let's consider the godly titles that we bear and live as worthy children of God, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, godparents, church members, and saints, so that in all we do, our risen Lord might be glorified, together with the Father and Holy Spirit, now and unto the ages of ages.